Today we're going to look at how to create your own chocolatey package. Now, this is a relatively straightforward concept, uh, simply creating an installation or automated installation for Windows. So let's look at the basics. Uh, first off, we're going to create a folder, and there's a reason for this. Um, I want to explain something very quickly to you, which is the kind of error that you can encounter. So if I create a folder called My Test Package, and then I go to chocolatey and I say, okay, I want to create a new package in this case. So I'm going to call it my uh, test package, exactly the same as the previous one. It's going to go and throw an error telling me that, hey, this folder already exists. So when you create a new package, it actually tries to create the folder with the same name. So for our example, we're just going to call it my test, simply enough. Now, when you do create a new package, it creates a number of files uh, immediately from the templates. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but keep in mind that you will need to modify and or delete a lot of these files to make it work the way that you want. So I'm going to have a quick look at some of these to give you an example. A uh, perfect example of this is, let's say, the install file. So the best way to look at the install file is to look at it at the ISE. Um, or if you happen to have something like Visual Studio Code, that's another good way. Frankly, I find Notepad is possible, but I wouldn't really recommend it. So let's look at the ISC, and we'll go into a couple of basics here. So as you can see, a lot of the information's already been filled out. So we could redo this because there's the option for file shares, for downloads, for the rest. We're going to make the assumption for a second that we're going to use a local file just to give the example some flesh. So in this case we're going to use an executable. Um, nothing special in creating an executable, it could be something else, but that means we need to then uncomment um, the file location option. We're also going to get rid of the URL and we are going to need to uncomment also the file location in the uh, download. Uh, we'll also need to uh, get rid of a few other checksums and change the silent arguments etc in order to kind of give you that fully fleshed out values that you would expect to see in a finished installation. So in doing this what you quickly might realize is that there's a lot of information that you don't use. So even though we're using the chocolatey packages and we're using the template here we're commenting and uncommenting a lot of this. And that's really, on one side, a good thing, but on the other hand, it's one of my little pet peeves, per se, about whole chocolatey scenario, is that this is the main file that it's created for you, not a separate um, example file. So you end up spending a lot of your time looking at it and going, hey, yeah, that's great as an example, but at the same time, really, it's, it's blocking you from progressing in some cases because you have a lot of duplicates. So we're going to flip over for a second to a pre-created one. So this is a package that I've already done earlier and I know is working. So again, looking at it from the point of view that uh, we have the template file already there, and I'm going to open it in the ISC. So exactly the same as we did with the previous one, uh, with just one or two subtle differences. This is already pre-configured, so I can get rid of all the blank text. So if we look at this and we just start removing the um, various commented uh, text-related information and cut it down to what do we really need, you're going to start to see how much of this file can just be basically stripped out and removed. So in this case, we have an installation that is a local file. So it's a straightforward, nothing super complicated. And even if you did, it probably wouldn't be as big as the example file. So we can delete a few lines here and there, and you can see we're down to like 65 lines already. We're, we're going to keep removing here because we're not anywhere near done yet. We're down to 48. We're down to 40. And we've even got a few spaces here. We're going to get rid of a bit more just to clean it up. That's still a bit further. And now we're down to a working file that is a total of 26 lines, and that's with spaces. That's 
that's how big your file really is at the end of it. And the same goes if you are creating something with URLs, downloads, etc. Trust me, it's very rarely above 40 lines in total. And the same goes for something like the uninstall. Again, uninstall, relatively straightforward, simple, nothing super complicated. You have the package, you have the file location, etc. And once you start stripping out all those additional lines that are just examples or comments, um, it really does cut down quite quickly to very little amount of information. So my point here is when you're creating a new chocolatey package, um, try to get rid of the stuff you're not using because amongst other things, it does make it a lot easier to read afterwards. And, and that's the thing I find the most annoying is that by default, the help that they've put in there is also a bit of a hindrance because it makes it unreadable. So just get rid of the stuff you're not using. And as you can see from this example, uh, we're down to 43 lines and I'm still tidying up. So we're down to 40 and probably with a bit more work, I could cut it down to 20 if I really wanted. But the point being, um, although I love chocolatey, I hate this particular thing about it. But anyway, we'll move on. Um, in your creation of your package, you need to create both the installation and preferably the uninstallation files. So in this case, they're already done. There is one other file that you really need to work with. I mean, there are other files that you can work with, uh, such as licensing and the rest. But the one that you really need to work with here is the XML based file. Now, it's not actually an XML file, but it's in XML format. So in my case, you can see that I've got a nice little neat one that tells me the file location, the version, um, all the information that I actually need for my package. Now we're going to go ahead and compare that to the one that's created right out of the box. And as you can see, um, it's a bit different from the point of view that there is a lot of extra information. And again, just like the other two files, it's too much. I honestly do believe this is a downside from this point of view for, for chocolatey. Please just give us a read through or a tutorial file separate from the main one would be much easier. Anyway, if you get rid of the fluff, let's call it, around the package that you don't need, you get down to things like a description, a package, a package version, an author, uh, a company, uh, some general description, and in my case, the file location. So this points to the tools directory, which also contains the executable. And, and that's it. That's all you need. So with that in mind, we're going to move ahead and go to the package creation stage. So if we clear this out and we go to the directory for the existing or pre-created in my case uh, file uh, that I know works, just from this point of view, bear with me. Uh, it's it's always best to test, but in my case, I want to make sure that I have a working one for my example. Now, from inside the directory itself, um, I have the option to use a couple of different commands. Um, as an example, you could specify the full directory, but I don't need to because I already am in the directory. So in my case, I can do the installation, the name of the package, and then I can just use the dot for the specified directory whilst if i was in a different directory i would need to use the dash s and then the full directory path so i'm going to go ahead and use that and as you can see we've we've got a, an example running here where it tells me okay you are not running this with elevated privileges and this is quite common when you're developing on a, a windows 8 or 9 uh, 8 or 10 there's no 9 um you get this uh, UAC prompt basically, and and that tells me in this case that oh you don't have you know sys admin privileges, and therefore you're going to get some potential errors. So we'll just go back in with the uh, command prompt open as a system administrator and run the same command, and you'll see that this time round a I will not get the error messages telling me that I'm not running with elevated privileges and that the installation works quite normally. Lots of green, a couple of warnings, but nothing major, uh, which is basically telling me that I'm working in a pre-build mode using the D and V switches. 
So this is a good way to test your package and as you can see so far all good that's why we're going with a previously tested slash working package for demo purposes to prove that that's all you need to do. Now same goes for the uninstall it's a very simple process now in this case there is no silent uninstall for this application so what's going to happen in a second here is it's going to prompt up with the GUI um, but with all the information filled in and it just requires me to press that nice little magic button that says uninstall. So depending on your application keep in mind the level of automation may vary. So in my case that's the, the, the final point that I'm just limited by that little point. Now I'm going to get rid of the package that I created earlier and show you from this point of view how to create that final step. So assuming your installation, your uninstallation and your XML configuration is all fine you literally just need to run the choco pack and it creates the file for you and, and that's the file that actually gets uploaded to your chocolate rep uh, repository which in earlier videos I showed you how to create a, a chocolatey pack, uh, package repository so that covers the basic steps of how to create a package and the package repository so we're going to go across over to our other package repository um, package that we created earlier the my test one and just show you what would happen if we didn't fill in those final steps and we create the chocolate package now what you're going to see is here the xml data which you were looking at earlier hasn't been filled so you've got an error straight off the bat and that's what we would expect to see in many cases if you have not finished now if you like this video um, give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more content if you didn't well hopefully just give us the feedback and we'll do something a bit better next time